So my name is Dave Bennett. Uh, I've been a parishioner at Holy Redeemer for almost 20 years. It'll be 20 years this Easter. My family growing up, I had uh, an older brother and a younger sister, uh, my mom and dad, of course. And we started going to church. I think my parents went back to church around the time I was seven, eight years old. Uh, and it was a wonderful, loving community, uh, you know, in a place that I really enjoyed. I participated in youth group, went to church camp, and I, I had a desire to get to know God. But I think I just didn't really know how. But I didn't think much about it until I was engaged to get married. And so I was engaged to Carrie, and we had been talking about, you know, where would we go, what would we do? And we kind of did the, uh, you know, one week she would come with me to my church, and then the next week I would come with her here to Holy Redeemer. My sense of, of faith was, it was really all about community, and I loved the people at the church that I attended. And so I thought, well, Carrie will come a couple of times, and she'll, uh, she'll, she'll meet these people, and she'll just say, oh, well, yeah, why would I not want to come here? Of course, this is where I want to be. And I remember we were uh, one time visiting with some, some high school buddies of mine, and Carrie had made a comment about, she said, I feel like I just radiate Catholicism. You know, like I, she felt like, she didn't quite fit in. At that moment, I realized I was like, oh, Carrie's never going to be comfortable in my church. And so I said, okay, I guess I better investigate this whole Catholic thing a little bit more. Because of course I had my preconceived notions of, of what the Catholic Church was and what they did that was wrong and all of those things. And so RCIA for me was great. It really opened my eyes to, to the beauty of the Catholic Church. It really helped to explain a lot of those misconceptions that I had about the Catholic Church. Um, but it's funny because there was the one thing that I wrestled with that I just couldn't get. And so even at the end of RCIA, I couldn't understand the true presence. You know, the, the, the notion that body, blood, soul, and divinity, that Jesus was truly present in the Eucharist, I just couldn't get it. And we weren't yet married, uh, but our wedding was coming up soon, and I was nearing the point of uh, being initiated into the church. And so I had a, a woman that I worked with who was gonna help do some of the singing at our wedding. Her dad was a deacon in the Catholic Church. And so I was asking her about, you know, kind of explaining my questions about the Eucharist and my doubts. And so she explained a little of her journey and kind of how she, how she came to believe. But really she said it was through prayer. She said, I would just encourage you to pray about it. So I said, okay. So I prayed off and on, you know, and I would like to say that I believed when I came into the church, but I really didn't. And I actually remember even saying to myself, I don't think there's anything on earth that could make me believe in the true presence, in Jesus's true presence in the Eucharist. And I remember it was probably six or seven months after I came into the church. We were kneeling, we were getting ready for communion, and I remember thinking a little bit about how I just don't quite get this. And I stepped into the aisle to receive, and just like that, I was filled, filled with the knowledge, filled with belief, filled with the truth that Jesus is truly present, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. This is Jesus, And for me, up to that point, all of my religious experience, all of my faith was kind of based on sound reasoning and things that I could make sense of in my mind. And this, it was like a, a, a knock you on your butt kind of moment where you're thinking, I don't, I, I've, I've never had an experience like that. And I've so often tried to figure out how to even put it into words. And there, there aren't any words. It was, it was the most powerful moment of my life. More powerful than when I got married, more powerful than when I had kids. It was a, it was taking that saying that I had said that there was nothing on earth that could make me believe, and it, it was truly not of this earth. It was nothing of this world. And it was this instantaneous moment. And it was this fountain of faith for me. Because then from that moment on, it was, it was this thing that I believed and I could ponder and, and it didn't make any sense. It wasn't, 
rational in the way everything else in my life had always been rational. And it, it was something where whenever you'd have those moments where you're like, you know, do I really believe this about the church or do I believe that about the church? And I would go back to that moment and I instantly was filled with faith. It was just, it was this wonderful fountain of faith for me. Uh, but you know how the evil one works? Uh, you know, I was still like afraid, like I was afraid to go in the Adoration Chapel. I thought, oh, well, people will know, uh, it'll be obvious to them that I'm a convert. And they're going to be like, what's this guy doing? He doesn't know what to do when he's here. And so the thing that really kind of then got me going next was when Father Steve brought Christ Renews His Parish. Christ Renews His Parish was a, was a powerful uh, weekend retreat, as so many weekend retreats are. And it was this wonderful moment. But what, what really then helped was afterwards, you were asked to, to join a team and, and be part of a, a group of men who would put this on. You know, you would study and you would examine your faith life for, say, six months. That forced me to, to pray on a regular basis and to read scripture on a regular basis and to go into the Adoration Chapel and to, uh, to really experience Jesus through that. And that's what really, I think, helped me to, to awaken to faith. And for me, I found it was that daily prayer. It was getting in a habit of praying daily that really opened my heart up to Jesus and allowed allowed him to come in uh, in a in a stronger, more solid way than I had ever let him in before.